morning. Good morning. Well, thanks for joining us for worship today at First Lutheran. A um, couple of announcements before we get started. The first one concerns the worship service today. We're making a small change. When we sing the, the, the This is the Feast, uh, the Canticle of Praise near the beginning, uh, it's taken a long time to sing that. It's a lot bit longer than we're normally used to. So what, what Judy decided was, with my blessing, on the refrain for This is the Feast, we're only going to sing it one time. So we'll sing the refrain once, then verse 1, then the refrain once, then verse 2, then the refrain once. Then verse 3, after verse 3, you do sing the refrain twice because it resolves down. So, uh, so if you read music and you know those two little dots at the end of the refrain mean repeat, just pretend you don't even see that. <laughs> Uh, other announcements. I'm starting a new Bible study class this week, uh, Mondays at 1.30 and Wednesday nights at 6.45. It's based on the streaming uh, series, The Chosen. It's very good. It's an excellent series. I'm hoping we'll get people who would like to come and see that. Um, next week is our service in the park. Uh, remember to bring your lawn chair. Uh, fellowship time starts at 9 o'clock. The service, of course, starts at 10 and then after the service is our community picnic. We've sent flyers around, Brenda and I have today, papered the neighborhood with flyers, and we'll, we'll do it again next Saturday. Uh, after the service, there's a picnic with hot dogs, chips, drinks, and there's a VBS Bible study for kids, games for all ages, and the backpacks that we're passing out to neighborhood kids. If you've not brought in your school supplies yet to stuff those backpacks, you've got until August 6th to do that. That's this Friday. Uh, we're going to be stuffing those book bags on August the 7th. Uh, also, August 7th, we'll have a park cleanup, and folks can help uh, congregate at the park to help uh, mow and trim and, and pick up the garbage and so forth for that. That'll be at 11 o'clock. Uh, the Faith and Friends outing to the Columbus Clippers game is still set for August 14th. Uh, tickets are $16 each. There's a sign-up sheet in the upper narthex. Today is the last day to sign up. So everyone's welcome. Uh, do that. Uh, and finally, uh, we thank the Mad River Valley Dulcimer Society for joining us today for our special music in the Upper Narthex. There's a basket for free will donations for that group, and I'd like to have Cindy come up now and explain a little more about the group. Bye. 
do we do with the money that we make in the various places that we play? Um, one, we support a youth group that uses playing in Baltimore in this group as their music courses if they're homeschool students. So this is the, we have spread out to that. We have a couple people in our club who pretty much take charge of that. And also, the money that we have goes towards providing scholarships for students who want to major in music of some sort. Um, we usually give at least one a year. We Sometimes we've had really good years and we've given twice in a year or for two students. Um, so that's just a little bit of background. We first were developed um, as a group and I think it was 1996 or 97. So we've been together for so if you have any questions, catch me up for sure, and I'll be glad to make you fall in love with it. Let's now prepare our hearts and minds for worship as the Dulcimer Society will play two hymns for us for our praise.
blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. 
and are satisfied. Fill us and this world in all its need with the life that comes only from you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Maybe seated. I just wanted to point out to you that we're playing the song I'll Fly Away. We'll play it a tune, oh, who is, is it? We'll play it a total of three times. But the first time through, we want you just to listen to the music, and then on the second and third time through, you have the words in your bulletin so that you can ring, sing those verses with us. said to them, if only he had died and by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flash pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill us, this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I'm going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I shall test them, whether they will follow my instructions or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Save the whole congregation of the Israelites. Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For the Lord did not know what it was. Moses said to them, 
It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. Today is Psalm 78. The congregation will read the bold print. Sponsor. So God commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. The mortals ate the bread of angels. God provided for them food enough. Bring down flesh upon them like dust, and flying birds like the sand of the sea. So the people ate and were well filled, for God gave them what they craved. The second reading today is Ephesians, fourth chapter. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead the life worthy by calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one who hoped your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above and then through all in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended, he when he ascended on high, he made captive his life itself. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean? But that he had also descended into lower parts of the earth. He who descends in the same one will ascend above all in the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some would be prophets, some would be evangelists, some would be pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for building in the body of Christ, until all of us came to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of God, the Son of God to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro, and blown about by every wind of the doctrine, by people's trickery, their craftiness and deceitfulness, scheming, but speaking in the truth of love. We must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with as each part is working properly, it promotes the body of growth in building itself into love. The word of the Lord. Gives life to the world. 
They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus has performed an astounding miracle, or what John calls a sign. He has fed over 5,000 people with nothing more than five loaves of bread and two fish, food that normally would feed a dozen, maybe 15 or 16 people at most. And the crowds are tracking him down, like people who see a magician perform a spectacular illusion, and they want to know, how did you do that? And can you do it again? And more importantly, are you anyway? Well, Jesus knows what they're doing. They aren't tracking him down because they're seeking God. They're tracking him down because they want more food. And so he tells them, don't work for food that perishes. You may get your fill of bread today, but tomorrow you'll just be hungry again. Don't make thinking only of yourself the primary focus of your life. Instead, work for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. In other words, don't make yourself and your own needs the center of your life. Make God's work the center of your life. And the people understand this, and then they ask the obvious question, what must we do then to perform the works of God? Now, if you were taking a test in Bible school, you saw this question written down on your test paper. What must you do to perform the works of God? I'm betting that most people would write down something like, feed the hungry, house the homeless, clothe the naked, visit the prisoner, heal the sick, welcome the stranger, give your money to the poor. And all of those things are perfectly fine answers. But if Jesus were the one grading your exam, he'd only give you partial credit at best. Because the answer Jesus gives is, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he has sent. That's it? Believe? I don't have to do anything, just believe? Faith, yes, faith in the one whom God has sent. The work of God means believing in Christ Jesus. And believe means much more than agreeing with a set of creeds. Believe, faith, involves trust. It means making Christ, not yourself, the center of your life. And when we do that, then all those other answers we came up with, feeding the hungry and housing the homeless, etc., all those things will naturally follow. So Jesus is saying that doing the work of God means believing in the one whom he has sent. And the people respond with one of the most bizarre and mind-boggling responses ever made. If you are the one whom God has sent, prove it. Give us a sign. He just gave them a sign. He just fed 5,000 people with almost no food. Furthermore, as if the crowds don't seem dense enough, they cite an example from the Old Testament without realizing that they've just seen the very same miracle happen again. Moses fed our people in the wilderness with manna and bread from heaven. What are you going to do? Well, the first thing Jesus does is set them straight. Moses didn't give the people the manna. God gave them. In the Exodus story, the people of Israel had apparently very quickly forgotten what God had done for them. God had freed them from slavery in Egypt. He had parted the Red Sea so they could cross in safety and escape Pharaoh's army. Then the sea closed again to drown Pharaoh's army. Now, however, the people are whining in the desert because they're hungry. They long to be by the flesh pots of Egypt. By the way, there's a great Christian band, Google them sometimes, the flesh pots of Egypt. Love the name. Sure, we were hungry, but at least we had food. God heard their cries and gave them manna. And I love how Psalm 78 puts it. The mortals ate the bread of the angels. Tell us about angels didn't eat. Apparently they ate manna. Then comes the big reveal, the news that will just blow people's minds. News that for some of them, they will leave Jesus over because they simply cannot accept it. What Jesus says is this. In the wilderness, God gave the people manna, the bread of life from heaven, and now God has done it again. God has given his people the bread of life from heaven. And this time the bread is not a wafer, and it's not even the bread that I just gave you to eat. 
That was just bread. It's me. I am the man. I am the bread of life from heaven. And just as God gave the manna to your ancestors in the wilderness so that they could eat it and live, God now sends me, the bread of life from heaven, to you so that you may live as well. In our Bible, in the other three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we find the story of the Last Supper, where Jesus takes the bread and says, This is my body given for you. John's Gospel, while it does speak of a last meal Jesus had with disciples with, where he washes their feet, doesn't seem to have this reference to bread. But it does right here, right here in chapter 6. The bread is not simply memorial or remembrance of Jesus. Jesus is the bread of life from heaven. And in our Eucharistic meal, we profess and believe that Christ himself is present in and with and under the elements of the bread and wine. And that is why one of our baptismal promises we make is to regularly come to the table of the Lord. And what does it mean for us to proclaim that Jesus is the bread of life? That's indeed a powerful image, but what practically does it mean for us? God gave the Israelites the manna from heaven not simply to feed them, but to let them know that God was with them. And likewise, God gives us, Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven, not simply to feed 5,000 people in the desert, but to let us know that God is with us, that God journeys with us, and that God gives us the power to do his holy work. We need four basic things in this world in order to survive. We need shelter and medicine and water and food. Jesus is our rock, the cornerstone for our shelter. Jesus is the balm that heals the sin-sick soul. Jesus is the living water, as he told the woman from Samaria in John chapter 4. And Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus gives us everything we need to live, and without Jesus, we cannot live. Oh, we'll live for a while without Jesus, but we will not have the eternal life that Jesus gives to us. Now, when we're wealthy or middle class and we live comfortably, it's easy for us to say that we have faith in Jesus, unless we fall into that trap of thinking that we've achieved everything on our own and therefore do not need God. In times of poverty, times of trial, times of struggle, we may find ourselves like the Israelites in the desert, forgetting, forgetting what God has already done for us. And for the poor of this world who struggle every day to have enough food to eat, it may be difficult to see God's grace. That is where the church must step up. With faith in Jesus, the bread of life from heaven, this is where the church can do the work of God. There's a beautiful hymn in our ELW, I didn't choose to sing it, but I wanted to close with the lyrics of that hymn because it beautifully reflects how with Christ at the center of our lives, the church will continually reform and continually have resurrection. And we as the church will join with Jesus in the healing of the world. The hymn is called The Church of Christ in Every Age. It's number 729. The Church of Christ, in every age, beset by change but spirit-led, must claim and test its heritage and keep on rising from the dead. Across the world, across the street, the victims of injustice cry for shelter and for bread to eat and never live before they die. Then let the servant church arise. A caring church that longs to be a pattern in Christ's a partner in Christ's sacrifice and clothed in Christ's humanity. For he alone, whose blood was shed, can cure the fever in our blood and teach us how to share our bread and feed the starving multitude. We have no mission but to serve in full obedience to the Lord, to care for all without reserve, and spread his liberating truth. God alone be the glory.
after prayerful deliberation, we of First Lutheran have appointed Rachel Gillespie to serve in the position of office manager. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who came among us as a servant, calls us to faith and a life of loving service to our neighbor. You come among us as one invited to render a particular service, a gift from God to inspire us to love and to good works. Rachel, in the presence of this assembly, will you commit yourself to this new trust and responsibility in confidence that it comes from God? If so, respond, I will, and I ask God to help. I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you carry out this ministry in accordance with the Holy Scriptures and with the confessions of the Lutheran Church and in harmony with the constitutions of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America? I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you be diligent in your study of the Holy Scriptures and faithful in your use of the means of grace and in prayer? Trusting in God's care, will you seek to grow in love for those you serve, strive for excellence in your skills, and adorn the gospel of Jesus Christ with a godly life? I will, and I ask God to help me. Almighty God, who has given you the will to do these things, graciously give you the strength and compassion to perform them. Amen. Amen. Please stand. People of God, will you receive Rachel Gillespie into this ministry as one sent to serve in the Church of Jesus Christ? We will, we will and ask God to help us. Will you pray for her, help her, and honor her for her work's sake, and in all things strive to live together in the peace and unity of Christ? We will, we will and we ask God to help us. Rachel, I now declare you installed as office manager. Almighty God bless you and direct your days and your deeds in peace, that you may be a faithful servant of Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, as you've called workers to various tasks in the world and in your church, so you have called Rachel to this ministry. Grant her joy and a spirit of bold trust, that her work may stir up each of us to a life of fruitful service through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
you stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. 